Hello, first of all, it's Thursday. <sighs> February 13th. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. You won't see this on Valentine's Day, but happy Valentine's Day. Um, I'm still in pretty much pajamas. I put on leggings, but not having a good day. <laughs> There's just, I've gotten a lot done. But I'm just kind of randomly listening to Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan. I need to read The Last True Poets of the Sea. It goes back to the library sometime tomorrow. So I'm going to run out of time. So I need to get on that. But I am having some intense cramps. <laughs> We're just going to say it. I might edit it out. Who knows? Which is inhibiting my ability to read or do a whole lot. Um, I mean, I'm doing what I can, but I would love to be like doing more, but instead I'm in my recliner and I'm about to put a heating pad on and hopefully that will allow me to read some, uh, taking pain medicine. It's just not getting better. <laughs> so there's that. I, um, yeah, I was going to film some videos for next week today. But, yep, <laughs> here we are. It's fine. It happens. It's totally cool. I will survive because tomorrow I'll be fine. It's generally a one-day thing. And then I'm totally okay afterwards. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not doing a lot. I want to be reading more today, but it's just not happening. And I'm going to be honest about it. So, here we are doing that. I am shopping the Jordan Denae Sarah McLean collection. I'm making some choices on what I want because I do want to get some pieces to wear and to wear for um KissCon, which like I guess let me know in the comments. Do you guys want like a how I prep for book events video because I kind of do like a thing where I build a spreadsheet and I could share that with like I can make a template one and share that. No big deal. Yeah, so like how I build a spreadsheet and like track who I've read and who I want to meet and then like Looking at panels and planning my not like full planning like we're not talking like clipboard of fun here, but I like to arrive at events Knowing like okay these these authors are my goal if that makes sense and then these ones are bonus Um, Yeah, let me know. I don't know if I'm weird for this or not but like I did it for a polygon I had a huge list of authors who I've read who I haven't and then I go through and try to read as many authors as I can which is pretty much my plan after this week is to start reading all of the authors going to KissCon I've not read before uh yeah I just wanted to give you a quick update on what's going on today instead of having no clips for today or scrapping them all hopefully some of this makes it in and yeah I'll talk to you later bye 2 a.m. in the car playing our favorite song. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm coming at you pre shower, but I finished Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan and I wanted to update you because, like, basically last night I was laying in bed listening to this book, like, crying. <laughs> quietly to not wake Dave up. As predicted, I knew this book was going to make me cry. There was just no way I wasn't going to cry um, from this book. I don't know why I put it off for so long. So if you also have been putting this book off for a long time because you know it's heavy and you know it's hard, I can't encourage you enough to go read it. Um, yeah, it's going to make you cry. But I think it's a great reminder that everyone deserves that HEA and everyone um even survivors you know it, everyone period it doesn't matter who you are what you go through for the most part you deserve it I mean maybe you don't if you're like a serial killer but generally speaking I'm going to say that everyone deserves their HEA and this book was a great reminder of it I will say though if you are listening to me talk about it and you're thinking you maybe want to read it go in knowing that there are a lot of content trigger warnings for this book, like abuse from a partner, uh, forced pregnancy, isolation from family and friends, um, rape by a partner, and a death of a family member, 
uh, flashbacks to Hurricane Katrina stuff in New Orleans. I think it was Katrina. Um, yeah, it's a lot. Like, a lot, y'all. Um, but I do think it's worth the read, and I think it's a very, like... I mean, uh, there's no reason. Like, it's obvious why it won the readers last year, and Kennedy deserves all the praise in the world. I adore that woman. Every time I've met her, she's delightful. And this isn't my first Kennedy book, but I've mostly read her shorter things because I know that her writing really, like, punches me straight in the stomach and, like, makes me cry. Because even her novellas make me cry. <laughs> so, yeah, I finished that. I gave it five out of five stars. I don't... I understand that it, it wouldn't work for everyone, but it really worked for me, and I really loved it. Um, as uncomfortable as I was reading some of it, but I, again, I think it was a really good reminder. We don't always know what's going on behind closed doors, and you know, we need to do better to protect victims of abuse, period, and see the signs. Um, what else? So I finished that, loved it, five star read. That was my heart, dark hard hitting contemporary. I have to finish The Last True Poets of the Sea today if I want to turn the Wi-Fi back on in my Kindle uh, by Julia Drake. So I'm gonna work on reading that. I also have a ton of laundry to do and I need to film some videos. So I'm about to hop in the shower and do my makeup and film some videos while I, like while I do all that, I'm gonna listen to Sick Kids in Love. This is, this is literally how I read so much. I will listen to an audiobook while I do every single menial task around the house. So I'm gonna listen to Sick Kids in Love while I do that and I will check back in shortly when I have more. Hello, so it's Friday afternoon. I have been awful at this today, the last two days. Today I feel 20 times better, so I did film one video of the like three I need to film soonish. I got some stuff in the mail, so I got comfy. And I think I'm going to call it on filming today because I also need to wash like three more loads of laundry. So I'm gonna do that. I'll film more tomorrow or Monday. I just mostly need to have my next video ready passed after these vlogs because I don't want to be like scrambling. But I just wanted to check in because I have 40, 40 minutes, less than 40 minutes left because I listen at 2.5 speed. So 20 minutes left in Sick Kids in Love, and this book, oh god, this book. This book is so, so good. I love the tagline, the kids don't die in this one. Um, the rap in this is amazing. The plot itself is very, like, realistically teen to me. It feels right. It doesn't feel forced or, like, not like teens are, if this makes sense. And it's just a really, really well done audiobook, and I am loving it so much. So I will check in when I finish it in a little bit. Hello, it's <laughs> Saturday morning. Yesterday was delightful. We ate fried chicken and comfies and watched Clone Wars. <laughs> um, Dave gifted me this big box of bath bombs that you'll probably see tonight, which is really sweet. We don't really do gifts for Valentine's Day. Um, I'm still in pajamas. <laughs> It's glorious, but I wanted to update you that I finished Six Kids in Love, Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. <sighs> I loved that book so much, y'all. It was such a delight. It was so much fun to read, and it just was about two kids that are sick, and they're in love, and it's super sweet and heartfelt and delightful, and go read it if you haven't. I really cannot recommend it enough. It is a great YA romance. Um, and it's also completely like closed door. It's implied they do it, but there's no on the page, which is fine by me because I personally don't want to read it uh, when it's scenes. But um, yeah, it's just so fun. It was such a great pick for my illustrated cover and I'm just so glad I read it. Our big plan today is to clean our garage out because we lived here a year and we just have stuff that's been sitting in there since we moved in almost probably. We're pretty much fully unpacked. I just have like some empty containers to get out of the areas they're in. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and I will talk to you soon when I read another book. I really gotta read The Last True Poets of the Sea because it's definitely been returned and my Kindle's on uh, off Wi-Fi so I can read it. Hello, it's Saturday night. It's almost nine o'clock. I am about to get in the bathtub and relax, but I wanted to update you on my evening. So we did a bunch of housework today. Um, 
had stuff I needed Dave's help with. So we did that and we went to dinner. We ran to Walmart, which means I picked up some books because Harlequin had two releases this month that I was so excited for. So first of all, I got The Temporary Wife Temptation by J.C. Lee, which I have an arc of and I haven't read it yet. Uh, I'm bad. <laughs> I need to read it. But I really want to read this. I might start it in the tub tonight, actually, for contemporary -thon because, well, I'll update you in a minute. But anyways, the other book I got is one that I read, which was Blame It on the Billionaire by Naima Simone. This was a great, great billionaire love story. I loved it. Uh, Naima writes amazing stories. It's so compact. I mean, that's the key with Harlequins, right? They're, they're like 220 some pages and they pack a punch and that's 100% what this book did. I just had so much fun with it. Um, so I picked those up and then I just finished listening to Aletha Romig's Spark, which is a dark romance thrill suspense suspense kind of uh it has the it's a spinoff series but i've not read the other series which was totally fine uh it's on audible romance first of all so if you're interested in it and you have that i would definitely check it out it was really good i really really liked it and i'm eager for book two which comes out this week and then book three doesn't like this coming week but book three doesn't come out until april i think I'm a little nervous as to how that's gonna work out but it was so fun y'all like it was a delightful like kind of edge of my seat but also like enjoyable second chance romance setup so Patrick and Madeline met as kids like as teens living on the street and they don't see each other they get married at 18 and then she vanishes and don't see each other for years and now they're in their 30s and they run into each other in Chicago again. Uh, she's there for a poker tournament and he is part of the underground there. So um, they meet there and things heat up and are spicy of course. And then the book just ended on quite the reveal that I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to spoil it. But wow, that was really fun. So I picked that to be my beloved by a member of the community because Steph reads romance rated it five stars on goodreads so here i am i read it i loved it i'm giving it a four it's like a four and a half it was good like really good and i really need book two uh to know how this ends so surprise of the century i wasn't sure what i think the last aletha romig book i read i didn't really i didn't hate it i read consequences and i didn't continue the series but i remember being so pissed at the end i was less pissed at this ending so i'm here for it and i'm excited uh yeah i'm gonna go take a bath i will talk to you in a little bit bye turn it up windows down we sing along it is the end of the readathons black loveathon ended on friday and contemporaryathon ended yesterday on sunday so the 14th and the 16th i wanted to run through all the books i read the nine books i read over that time span and talk about them a little bit and give you like a little summary at the end of the vlog and just in case you want to skip the vlog i also don't think i updated you on anything i read this weekend so let's do that now <laughs> it was fun we had a good weekend but sometimes that happens so I've got my list up here and I'm going to give you some quick summaries of the book. So first of all, I read Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn, which follows Alice, who is asexual and is figuring a lot of things out and meets someone who really is off her scale she has for attraction. Uh, it was so she meets Takumi at work and he literally blows her scale she has for how attractive someone is out of the water. Um, it was delightful. I really, really like this book. I think it has great rep in it and I can't recommend it enough if you're looking for a book with asexual representation. I gave it a three out of five stars. I had a couple issues with the plot and how things resolved, but I still really liked it and I can't wait to read more by Claire Kahn. This accounted for Black Loveathon's Read a Queer Black Love Story. Next, I read Intercepted by Alexa Martin, which I adored. So this is a football romance and it follows Marley, who I think I fell in love with, and Gavin, who is also quite amazing. This follows Marley's story of leaving her longtime boyfriend, who is a shitbag, it turns out, of course, 
and falling in love with Gavin and dealing with that. Gavin and her had a one night stand a long time ago when the two of them had split for a while. So it was really fun having them get back together and like run into each other and all that tension. This book for me read like a Housewives TV show on Bravo. But like even better than that overall. Hopefully you can't hear that. They are fixing my roof right now, which is great. I'm really glad they're here to do that finally. Uh, we lost some shingles at the storm. So that was intercepted. I gave that four out of five stars. That counted for Black Levathon's Read a Sports Romance. Next we have Pulling Doubles by Christina C. Jones. I have fallen in love with Christina C. Jones through this readathon and through the past year or so since I start, first discovered her. I can't wait to read more by her. I loved Pulling Doubles. This one follows Devin and Joseph and it's part of the Wright Brothers series. Devin is doing her final training to become a nurse practitioner and Joseph is a doctor. He's an OBGYN at the hospital where she's training. It's heated, it's tense because they're attracted to each other but they don't want to be because workplace. So so well done. I really love this book. It was a solid like three and a half four star read for me. Cannot recommend it enough. I counted this for Black Levathon's Read a Black Love Story. Next we have another Christina C. Jones. I immediately finished that and went right into Bending the Rules by Christina C. Jones which is the third and final book in the Wright Brothers series although I think there is a holiday novella I'm gonna have to read. This follows Justin and Tony who were best friends for a very long time until he stabbed her in her back. Kind of. There is a lot more to it than that but they had all these rules in place. They were never gonna date. Well Tony comes back to town and Justin is like whoa wait a minute and is attracted to her. So it's freaking delightful. I loved this book so so much. I think it was a great conclusion to the trio's love stories. This one might be my favorite. I love a good friends like friends to enemies to lovers like something happens and now they like kind of hate each other or one of them hates the other and then they like come around and get together. I adored it. So this whole plot centers around Justin's new book he wants to pub have published and his shitty old publishing house and him and Tony figuring out the whys of what happened back then when they got into their big fight and what she was running from slash is running from. That was also like a three and a half out of four star read. So I counted pulling or not pulling doubles. I counted that one for um, my friends to lovers romance for Black Lovathon because I mean, come on. Okay, now on to all of the contemporary thon books pretty much. So next we have Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I gave this a four and a half out of five star read. I think this book is near perfection. It's not Rafe because Rafe was just Rafe. Like there's nothing else besides Rafe for me um, in that category in a way. But this is close second. I really loved Zenny and Mason. So Zenny has to marry Mason to inherit this massive fortune left to her by her aunt. I don't want to tell you anything else about this plot because there's a lot of reveals that happened like very early on and this book was so good. I loved getting to see Silas and Liz again from the Beards and Bondage series. I loved the town they were in. I loved the way the plot unfolded. It just was so much fun to read overall. Like Rebecca writes really engaging characters at the end of the day and really good sex scenes so it's always a blast. So I counted this for green on the cover um, for contemporary thon and again if you haven't read Rafe and you haven't ha read Zenny go pick them up ASAP. <sighs> the next prompt for contemporary thon is new to you author. I used Intercepted by Alexa Martin for this. I've already talked about that book. Uh, diverse I picked Bending the Rules for this by Christina C. Jones. Same thing. Already talked about it. Next we have Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. What do I say about this book? I give this book five stars. I had a really 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 good reading week. Like I think almost everything I read was like a three and a half and up. I cannot Sick Kids in Love was an easy five star read. This book is about two kids, Isabel and Shot Sasha, who are sick. And I'm gonna have to stop because you can hear them. Okay. Um, well, you know what? I'm gonna, we're gonna try. Hopefully it's not too loud, the dude's on my roof. But Sasha and Isabel are both chronically ill. They're always sick. So this is literally about them falling in love and it's 
so soft and so sweet and I just like it made me cry and I loved this book so freaking much I cannot recommend it enough if you want a book about two sick kids that fall in love and don't die at the end sick kids in love was my illustrated cover for contemporary -athon. next we have long shot by kennedy ryan this counted for two prompts for me this was my has been on my backlist for over a year and is a dark and hard-hitting uh book so long shot what do i say about long shot so i got this on audible romance i'm not sure if i just had it checked out before it got pulled out so i still had it or if it's there or not I'll make a note down below um either way this was nominated for a Rita last year and we were going we read it for romance sparks joy um but at the time I was not in a place to read this book you really 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 should look for a very comprehensive list of content and trigger warnings for this book it includes abuse from a partner but not the hero of the story a lot of the book is about Iris finding her way and getting back to August who is incredible i gave this a five star five out of five i loved this book so so much and i cannot recommend it enough if you have any interest in it i think kennedy writes stories that really hit home and are hard to read but are important stories to be told and to enforce that everyone deserves that hea and like it doesn't matter what you went through you still deserve to be loved for who you are and not treat it like shit. It is so good. And I'm getting teary-eyed just talking about it. Between this and Sick Kids in Love, I had a crying fest. Okay, and then last but not least for the prompts, I read Spark by Aletha Romig. This is my beloved by a member of the booktube community. Hi, Steph. Thank you so much for uh, talking about this book on Goodreads. And I think on a wrap-up, too, of course, I just was needing something ridiculous after being wiped out by sick kids in love and long shot and this book did it for me wow was it a ride it is a romantic suspense we'll say it's really hard to talk about this book without giving you spoilers to be honest but i will say it follows two kids who met as teens madeline and patrick met as teenagers they were living on the streets and they got married when they turned 18 and then she vanished they're in their late their mid to late 30s and they meet again and we get to watch that happen and it ends on a cliffhanger of a reveal so book two is out next this week or next week i think when i post this and then we have to wait like two more months for book three so there's that <laughs> yeah thanks so much Steph, for talking this book up because i don't know if i would have picked it up otherwise and now i have officially fallen down a hole so just real quick the other books i read during the readathon that don't count for anything i read secrets by aletha romig which is book one in the other series that follows this group in chicago they're called the sparrows um so i read book one of that and i'm a third of the way through book two which is called lies and last night i started on her master's secret service by lexi blake and i'm 60 percent through that uh i almost stayed up all night to finish it but i decided i wanted to sleep it for my contemporary thon and black love thon wrap up and vlog i hope you had a great readathon let me know down below if you posted a wrap up or a um vlogs for this and i haven't commented on them yet because i would love to go watch them and thank you so much for watching be sure to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up i will see you in a few days with another video bye the summer night has just begun